seven kingdoms arose from the human empire of Arathor. Together, the kingdoms dominated much of the eastern continent, their combined armies ensuring their borders and their allies remained safe. For centuries, the kingdoms met little opposition, skirmishing amongst themselves or with the scattered tribes of trolls or gnolls. The orcs provided a much greater threat. The might of the orcish horde broke the kingdom of Stormwind, coerced the king of Alteric, and threatened the elven kingdom of Quel'Thalas, before eventually marching on the walls of Lordaeron. It took the combined might of six of the seven human kingdoms, the elven and the dwarven kingdoms, gnomish ingenuity, and a serious fracture within the orcish army to throw back the invading force. Among the kingdoms that fought against the orcs was the kingdom of Gilneas. Gilneas' army was strong, but contributed little to the war. The king, Gengreymane, was opposed to the idea of the Lordaeron alliance, and only joined reluctantly. So when the war ended, and a number of the orcs were captured and placed in internment camps rather than executed, Gilneas pulled its support from the alliance. Greymane refused to lend resources to keeping the savage orcs alive, or in helping rebuild those kingdoms too weak to have held the orcs at bay. Gilneas' separation with the other human kingdoms went further than just politically. In the years following the Second War, Greymane had a massive wall constructed. The Greymane Wall cut off ties between Gilneas and the rest of the world. From then on, Gilneas would stand alone. The construction of the Grey Main Wall cut off not only outsiders, but a number of Gilneans as well. The villages of Pyrewood and Ambermill were left on the northern side of the wall, part of the lands owned by Darius Crowley. Crowley was a close friend of Gen Grey Main, but the wall caused tension between Crowley and the king. Those tensions rose when the Third War broke out and undead began to ravage the lands of Lordaeron. Refugees from all across the continent of Lordaeron came to the gates of the Greymane Wall, requesting sanctuary, as well as aid in the war with the undead. Gilneas ignored the cries for help, safely locked away behind their wall. But their safety did not last forever. Undead beat relentlessly at the wall, threatening to break through and spread the dreaded plague into Gilneas. Desperate to protect his people, Greymane sought the help of the Gilnean archmage Arugal. Arugal concocted a plan. Several mages in Dalaran, Arugal included, had been researching the Deadly Worgen, a race of werewolves locked away in another world. The history of these worgen were a mystery to the mages of Dalaran, but Arugal told Greymane that he could summon the worgen onto Azeroth and pit their savagery against the endless hordes of undead. Greymane agreed, and Arugal released the worgen on the undead, north of the Wall. The worgen tore through the undead, and then turned on the humans not protected by the Wall. The Worgens carried a curse, a curse that quickly spread amongst the humans. The keep of Baron Silverlane, perched atop the cliff tops of Pyrewood, was overtaken by the Worgen and quickly fell. Arugal, seeing the horror his plan unleashed, followed the Worgen into the keep and claimed it as his own. The keep was renamed Shadowfang Keep, and the city of Pyrewood below was subjected to the Worgen's curse. Arugal formed an alliance with the leader of the Worgen, Alpha Prime and together they formed the Wolf Cult, dedicated to the search for the Scythe of Loon. The Scythe was the key to the Worgen's prison, and though Rugal's magic had freed many Worgen, the Scythe would give them full control. Darius Crowley watched these events unfold over his lands, his people caught between the ceaseless undead and the brutal Worgen. He grew infuriated with the king for subjecting his people to such a horrible fate. He lent a brigade of his soldiers to the Alliance to help in the war, as well as Jaina Proudmoore's journey to Kalimdor. When Greymane learned of this, he confronted Crowley and accused him of treason. Infuriated, Crowley declared war against Greymane. Crowley gathered as many angry Gilneans as he could and began the Northgate Rebellion. The rebels fought a brutal war right to the capital of Gilneas. It was in the streets of the capital that the rebellion ultimately failed. Crowley and his rebels were imprisoned, and for a time it appeared peace would return to Gilneas. But the Worgen weren't far behind the rebels. When Worgen began appearing in the forests around Gilneas city, panic broke out among the people. Soon, the city itself was under attack by the Worgen. With the Worgen in the streets, the army doubled down on the military quarter, using it as a safe haven for evacuated citizens. One unlikely citizen is found by Liam Greymane, the Prince of Gilneas. He directs the citizen to Lieutenant Walden for evacuation orders. 
When the citizen finds the lieutenant dead, covered in claw marks, the citizen chooses to make a report to the prince rather than flee. Impressed by the citizen's competence in the face of danger, he employs the citizen to help evacuate the market quarter. Evacuated civilians in tow, the new hero reaches the military quarter, where King Greymane stands with his entourage. Picking up on the hero's ingenuity, he asks the hero to seek reinforcements. Within the military quarter lies the prison, where the rebels, Lord Crowley included, are kept. With the threat of the worgen looming over the city, Gilneas needs all the help it can get. Despite the nearby Lord Godfrey's protests, the hero is sent to free Crowley. The hero finds Crowley on the rooftop, having already encountered the worgen threat. Crowley agrees with Greymane's assessment, they must stand together if Gilneas is to stand a chance. He also gives the hero the location of a stash of heavy artillery, hidden for use in the Civil War, that may prove useful. Greymane, disturbed that Crowley had that sort of firepower within the walls of Gilneas, sends the hero to the cellar to go check it out. In the cellar, the hero encounters a human who is extremely distressed. The human turns into a worgen before their eyes and lunges at the hero, biting them. Lorna Crowley, Darius's daughter, saves the hero before the worgen can inflict any more damage. Wounded and shaken, the hero leaves the cellar to report to the king. The hero finds the king holding off a worgen onslaught. The king is considering using their artillery to level the district, worgen and all. But caught in the district is the alchemist, Crenan Aranas. Crenan had concocted a potion that saved the princess, Tess Greymane, shortly after being born, and is held in high regard among the people of Gilneas. The hero mounts a horse and rushes into the district to save Crenan. The attack on the worgen is carried out, dealing a heavy blow to the worgen numbers. Greymane leads a retreat to Duskhaven, outside the city, while the hero and a handful of Gilneans stay behind to cover the retreat. The hero and Crowley eventually retreat into Lightsdawn Cathedral, where they make their last stand. They are soon overwhelmed by worgen, and lose themselves to the curse. Some time passes. The hero, now a worgen beast, is found and recognized, and taken into custody. The hero wakes to find themselves shackled. Crenan, Greymane, and Godfrey are arguing over what to do with the hero. Godfrey pushes for execution. Crenan wants to try treatments he's working on. Greymane supports the alchemist, and together they are able to repress the hero's feral tendencies, returning its mind to a human's. Shortly after the hero regains their senses, the Gilnane people are attacked once more. Forsaken ships have pulled up to the shore, and are preparing to mount an assault. Reefs once protected the shores of Gilneas from invading ships, but the recent earthquakes appear to have broken those defenses. Prince Liam Greymane leads the defense against the undead. Before the invasion can advance too far, however, a massive earthquake hits Gilneas, sinking the forsaken ships and a large portion of the land itself. The cataclysm had struck Gilneas. With the hero's help, Prince Liam and the defending forces recover and begin an evacuation further inland. Afraid the land could collapse further, the hero meets with the king, and the two look over the remnants of the Gilnean shoreline, and then spot forsaken ships moving in to attack. The hero hurries to join the evacuation, but around the corner, ogres strike. Two other carriages have been knocked down by ogres, the survivors fighting for their lives against local crocodiles. Prince Liam, who was in one of the carriages, helps the hero enrage the local Etten leading the ogres, and use him to stall the forsaken force hot in pursuit. Those successfully evacuated meet at the village of Stormglen. The original inhabitants of Stormglen had fled the Worgen Curse, retreating into the nearby mountains. Now, half the village is overrun by spiders, and only a journal remains to detail the village's fate. The journal's author, Bradshaw, fled into the Blackwald once the Worgen assaults stopped coming. Following in Bradshaw's footsteps, the hero stumbles across an unlikely ally, a night elf. The night elf Belisra promises an explanation for her presence, but first, a forsaken ranger is hot on the hero's trail. The hero intentionally sets off the ranger's trap and slays the forsaken, before proceeding to the tree Taldoran. There, the hero begins to learn the full story of the Worgen curse. Ten thousand years ago, the War of the Ancients shook the world, sundering the land and upheaving the night elven civilization. During the war, a number of Night Elves accepted the demonic taint of the Burning Legion, and were transformed into satyrs. Several centuries later, as the Night Elven civilization was rebuilding, the satyrs bore down on the Elves. The War of the Satyr was a brutal one. 
Among the elven defenders were Malfurion's burgeoning druids, and among those were the druids of the pack. The druids of the pack sought to master the pack form, a druid shapeshift that resembled the ancient guardian Goldrin. Malfurion, seeing how the pack form turned its users feral, prohibited its use, but his warnings were not heeded. They sought to control the feral rage through the use of the Scythe of Elune, an artifact created using a fang of Goldrin and the Staff of Elune. This caused the opposite effect, however, fully transforming the users into the cursed Worgen. The Worgen fought viciously, but were lost to their rage. Eventually, Malfurion was forced to lock the Worgen away in the Emerald Dream. The Night Elf that helped create the Scythe of Elune, and later turned the artifact into Malfurion, was Belisra, the Night Elf now offering her assistance to the Worgen hero. She has returned to Taldoran, the ancient home of the Druids of the Pack, in the hopes of helping the Worgen with their curse, and to keep the Scythe of Elune out of the Forsaken's hands. The hero steals the Scythe from the Forsaken, and with the help of the Night Elves, the Worgen are cleansed of their imbalance, giving them full control of their Worgen form. Under the tree of Taldoran, Darius, Lorna, Godfrey, and Gen Greymane all gather. Godfrey demands that Crowley, who has long since taken the Worgen form, submit to Greymane's rule. Greymane reveals, to the shock of Godfrey, that he too has been infected by the Worgen curse, transforming into a Worgen before their very eyes. The group disperses, and shortly after, the hero learns that Godfrey has taken Greymane prisoner with the help of Lord Walden and Baron Ashbury. With Crenan's alchemical help, the hero assassinates Walden and Ashbury before confronting Godfrey. Godfrey shouts that he would rather die before serving a Worgen king, and then leaps from a cliff, killing himself. The king, saddened by such a display, sends the hero off to retake the village of Emberstone from the Forsaken, before preparing a final push to retake Gilneas from the Forsaken, before preparing a final push to retake Gilneas. Three armies strike at Gilneas city, Prince Liam from one side, Darius Crowley from another, and King Greymane from a third. The three forces meet up at Gen's position, where they confront Sylvanas. Sylvanas pulls a poisoned arrow on Gen, and at the last second, Liam jumps in the way. Sylvanas walks away, and in the arms of his father, Prince Liam dies. The hero prepares to chase after Sylvanas, and in the cathedral, overhears an argument between Sylvanas and General Warhowl, War Chief Garrosh's man. Warhowl warns Sylvanas that the use of the Forsaken's plague has been prohibited. Sylvanas lies, promising that she won't use it. As soon as Warhowl is out of earshot, Sylvanas orders her men to continue with the plan, to fill the city of Gilneas with the plague. The hero returns to Gen Greymane, and the king interrupts his mourning to prepare an evacuation for all surviving Gilneans. It is time to leave Gilneas. The Gilneans flee to a nearby port. Liam is put to rest, and with the Night Elf's help, the Gilneans flee the coastline and make for the continent of Kalimdor. The Night Elves extend an invitation of refuge for the Gilneans in Teldrassil, and there, the Gilneans, Worgen included, find a new, temporary home. They join the alliance they had so long ago abandoned, and prepare to help the Night Elves in the mounting war with the Horde. Perhaps one day, they will return to rebuild Gilneas, but for now, they do their part to make sure the rest of the world doesn't suffer the same fate.